Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check two products from a new company named Ziz. Aziz Light! The first one is a 30mm stack which is based on an F7 flight controller and a 60 ampere 4 in 1 BLD32 ESC. And the second one, which you probably won't be able to guess by its package, is a 5.5 inch racing frame. In this video, I'm going to go over the features and specs of the stack and assemble the frame. And in the next couple of days, I'm going to feature the stack in another video, where I'm going to build and fly the Catalyst Machine Works Merica X. Let's first start with the stack. In terms of packaging, here is everything you can find inside the racing combo. The main components are the F7 flight controller, 60 ampere 4 in 1 ESC, and the LED system. And besides, inside the racing combo, these items are also available individually. In addition, inside the box, you can also find a high quality XT60 battery connector with pre soldered 8 cm long 12 gauge battery leads, two 35 volts 470 microfarad low ASL capacitors, two spare M3 rubber grommets in addition to the ones which are already pre inserted to the 4 in 1 ESC and flight controller, aluminum M3 spacers and screws, four pin headers, and a harness for connecting the flight controller with the Z's 4 in 1 ESC and extra connectors for connecting it with other ones. In terms of specs, the flight controller came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.0 and it is using the Ziz F7 firmware. It features a USB Type-C connector, 6 free UART ports, an MPU 6000 gyro chip, a 5V 3A BEC, a built-in VTX switch that will enable you to turn on or off the VTX using an auxiliary switch, an onboard 128MB of memory for black box, a built-in LED distribution board, so on each corner you can find a 3 pins connector for an LED strip. It weighs 8 grams. Its outer dimensions are 38 by 33 by 4.6 millimeters. It has an onboard LC filter for 5 volts VTXs. Its maximum DC input voltage is 36 volts, so you can power it up directly with up to 8 S like batteries. And it will enable you, using the provided pin headers, to mount directly on top of it a Crossfire Nano receiver and a TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano VTX. You should note that before installing this flight controller on your stack, you will need to determine the voltage which is going to be supplied to the video transmitter and the radio receiver, as otherwise they are not going to be powered up. So over here you can find three soldering pads, which are going to enable you to power up the VTX using either 5 volts by bridging the center pad with the left one, or using the VBAP by bridging the center pad with the right one. And similarly, using these three soldering pads, you can decide whether to power up the radio receiver by using 5 volts or 3.3 volts. In addition, these three pads over here would enable you to choose whether to use this pad as the UART 6 dx pad, or use it for camera control. You should also note that when configuring the flight controller on Betaflight, you must set a range for the user 1 mode, as otherwise the VTX is not going to be powered up. As for the 60 ampere 4 in 1 ESC, it features very big motor and battery pads, which can be found on both sides. As far as I can tell, its build quality looks great. It features an aluminum heatsink with ventilation holes in order to keep it cool. In addition to this 8 pins connector, you can find these pads, which match its layout. It weighs 22.1 grams. Its outer dimensions are 42.8 by 46.7 by 7.6 millimeters. It's running Bill Heli 32 firmware and it supports a continuous current of 60 amperes with a peak current of 90 amperes. As for the LED system, you're getting four shrink wrapped 10 LED strips and six GST 1 mm connectors in order to connect the LED strips to the flat controller. The weight of each LED strip is 0.7 grams and a gram including the connector. And according to Ziz, these are the smallest LED strips for racing drones that are currently available. So overall, the Ziz Racing Combo looks like a high quality, well built and well designed stack. And my only suggestions to Ziz are that on the next version they should consider adding a 9V or 12V BEC and maybe a dedicated connector for a DJI Air unit. And they should also consider replacing this boot button with a physical and more robust one as in my experience, this type of boot buttons is not very reliable. Now let's check the 5.5 inch Capiche racing frame. Inside the box you can find the top, middle and bottom plates, two FPB camera side plates, four replaceable 5.5 inch carbon fiber arms, the assembly diagram, and the bag with all the required spaces and screws. In order to assemble the frame, First insert the longer 40mm M3 screws to the 4 holes on the corners of the bottom plate and the shorter 10mm one to the 4 holes on its center. 
Then place the carbon fiber arms in the following manner. Then place the middle plate. Mount the aluminum spacers on the 14 mm screws. And then secure all the screws on the bottom of the frame. Now after placing the FBB camera side plates into their position, we can place and secure the top plate. As for its specs, the weight of the frame is 75.9 grams. Its wheelbase is 225 mm and it features a stretch X pattern. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 5 mm and its width is 9.7 mm. The thickness of the bottom, middle and top plates is 2 mm. The distance between the middle plate to the top one is 25.3 mm. On the middle and bottom plates, you can only find 30.5 by 30.5 mounting holes, so 20 by 20 stacks are not compatible. And finally, this frame supports micro-sized FEV cameras, which you'll be able to mount in different angles. So as you can see, this is a pretty simple and minimalistic 5.5 inch racing frame, which unfortunately does not support 20 by 20 stacks, which I'm sure some of you are going to find that disappointing. However, on the other hand, it is very light, feels very robust, and features high quality premium carbon fiber parts. So that's going to be it for my initial review of the current available products by Ziz, and I'm pretty sure that they will expand their line of products to other ones as well, as this company is backed by a very respectable and reliable company, so I'm looking forward to their next products as well. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.